Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. Okay, welcome back. So we're in the process now of wrapping up week four. There are two things I want to do. One is to discuss how we connect the model that we've been developing and understanding to the more traditional model, what we've been calling the virtual source model here, and then how we apply it to experimental data and what we can learn by doing that. So that's what we'll be doing in the next two lectures. This lecture is about connecting what we've been doing to the virtual source model. Okay, here's our model, and our model relates current to charge and transmission. We have both a linear region expression and a saturated region expression, and we can write the charge using careful MOS electrostatics to treat subthreshold, above threshold, dibble, and things like that. Or we can do it in a simpler way and just look above threshold and write it as C inversion VG minus VT. When the transmission is one, we have our ballistic model. And we've been spending this week talking about what happens when transmission is less than one. Now, if we look at the traditional model, then we can express it in a similar way. The key parameter in low bias in the linear regime is the effective mobility, the average mobility of electrons in the inversion layer. And the key parameter under high drain bias is the high field saturated velocity. And the MOS electrostatics is the same. The Poisson equation doesn't really care too much about transport. So let's see if we can make this connection and how we can do that. And let's look first at low drain to source bias in the linear regime. We're above threshold, so I'll use the simple expression for inversion layer charge. And we get this simple traditional expression for the linear region drain current. Okay. We also have an expression in our scattering model for the linear region drain current. Looks much different. I'm doing it with Maxwell Boltzmann statistics just to keep the math simple. You know, we could do it properly in Fermi Dirac integrals of various order would pop up in different places. But to understand the connection and the relation, it's easiest to do it this way. Key parameters are the transmission, unidirectional thermal velocity. Okay. And the transmission is related in a simple way to the mean free path. And I could use that connection then and just express the transmission in terms of the mean free path. And I would get something that's um, very simple. I could, write, I could write this expression in this way. And it's just a matter of doing a little bit of algebra, algebra and recognizing that one of the things that comes out here is the effective mobility. And then on the bottom is mean free path plus channel length. So I get an expression that looks very much like the traditional expression. But instead of the current being proportional to W over channel length, it's proportional to W over channel length plus the mean free path. Now that's very nice because it saves us. As channel lengths scale towards zero, or get very, very small, we don't have to worry about W over L blowing up. It just goes to W over mean free path. That's the ballistic limit. And then you ask, well, what's the mean free path doing in our expression for the current and the ballistic limit? Well, remember, the effective mobility has a mean free path in it. So those two just cancel out and we get the proper expression for the ballistic current. Now, there's another way that I could write this, that mobility is related to mean free path. So I could do the algebra and express the same equation in a different way. But this is also instructive. If I do it that way, just some algebraic manipulation, I can write the scattering model and I can make it look exactly like the traditional model with one change. The effective mobility, the average mobility of electrons in the inversion layer is replaced by something I'll call the apparent mobility. And what is the apparent mobility? The apparent mobility is given by this expression, which basically says the apparent mobility is the smaller of either the ballistic mobility or the real mobility, what the traditional MOS community calls the effective mobility. So uh, again, when the 
ballistic mobility is small, it dominates and we get the ballistic limit. When the ballistic mobility is large, it doesn't limit anything and we get the traditional expression. So we have two different ways and surprisingly, a little bit surprisingly, we can make our expressions, although they've come out of a much different physical view, we can make them look very much like the traditional approaches. So let me just uh, make a quick note about some of the terminology. We can, you know, um, it's easy to get confused by all these subscripts. So what is MUSA-BEN? You know, when I write MUSA-BEN, I'm thinking about the electron mobility in a bulk semiconductor. It's electrons rattling around and scattering ion off ionized impurities, lattice vibrations, defects, whatever. And we can measure a mobility, and I would call that MUSA-BEN. Okay. Then there's something that the MOS community calls the effective mobility. This is the mobility, again, it's a real mobility, it's, but it's a mobility of electrons in the inversion layer. And it depends on scattering off the roughness of that interface and also on all of the other scattering processes that are there in the bulk as well. And it depends then on how close the electron is to the interface, then it scatters more. So it's a depth averaged real electron mobility. So when I'm calling when I'm talking about mu effective, I'm talking about the real scattering limited mobility of electrons in an inversion layer. In general, it's quite a bit less than the bulk mobility because these interfaces for silicon tend to be microscopically rough and induce a lot of scattering. If we do 3-5 heterostructure transistors, those interfaces can be almost atomically flat. And in that case, you can get mobilities of electrons in the inversion layer that are very close to the bulk mobilities. Well then, what's this apparent mobility? Now this is the mobility that you would deduce if you went in and measured a, a MOSFET, uh, a short channel MOSFET. And it includes the effect of the ballistic mobility. And the way we include them is by this, uh, by simply adding their reciprocals. And the effect of that is that it tells us that whichever one is smaller, that's the one that's going to control the performance of the device. And remember that the ballistic mobility is proportional to the channel length. So as the channel length gets shorter and shorter, the ballistic mobility gets smaller and smaller. Eventually it controls the performance of the device. Okay, so that's our connection. We have the traditional model in terms of the real scattering limited mobility of electrons in the inversion layer. And we have the scattering model that appropriately captures both the long channel scattering limited case, but also the short, very short channel ballistic case in terms of this apparent mobility. And one over the apparent mobility is just one over the real mobility plus one over the ballistic mobility. Adding scattering mechanisms, when you have two different scattering mechanisms and each one gives you some mobility and you want to know what's the mobility when both of those scattering mechanisms are happening at the same time, semiconductor people use what's called the Mathiasen's rule. You just say one over the total mobility is due to, is one over the mobility due to mechanism one plus one over the mobility due to mechanism two. So we're sort of seeing the same thing here. 1 over the apparent mobility is 1 over the real mobility plus 1 over the ballistic mobility. We're just adding two different physical mechanisms here. And remember, to measure this real mobility, we really should measure it in a long channel device. Or at least it's, it's much easier to do it that way, where the device is very many mean free paths long, mobility is a well-defined concept, and it's easier to measure. The ballistic mobility is proportional to channel length. So it can get very low for very short channel lengths. In that case, the ballistic mobility term will dominate and the apparent mobility will be the ballistic mobility and we're at the ballistic limit. Okay. So just very quickly to look at what happens in that ballistic limit to see how it happens. We have our expression. We know what the ballistic mobility is. For very, very short channel lengths, the ballistic mobility will be much less than the real mobility. So the apparent mobility is the ballistic mobility. If I simply put the ballistic mobility into this expression, I'll get an expression that looks like this. And now you can see that the length from the ballistic mobility, 
cancels with the W over L, the length in the W over L out front, and we get a ballistic current that is independent of channel length just exactly the way it should be. So this simple prescription of replacing the real mobility by the apparent mobility gives us a model that works all the way from the ballistic to the diffusive regime. So that's very nice. So as a quick example, you know, let's take a 22 nanometer MOSFET. Again, I'll use a rough value for the mobility, say it's 200 centimeters squared per volt second. Let's see if we could estimate what the ballistic mobility would be for this device. We simply plug in numbers. If it's silicon 100 oriented, the appropriate effective mass will be that transverse effective mass. I'll get a unidirectional thermal velocity of 1.2 times 10 to the seventh. I'm assuming Maxwell Boltzmann statistics here, just to get a feel for the numbers. Plug the numbers in and you get a ballistic mobility that is 500 centimeters squared per volt second. Now, if this is much, much larger than the real mobility, then it doesn't matter, and we're in the traditional diffusive regime. If this is much, much smaller than the real mobility, then we're in the ballistic regime. We're sort of in this gray area, in what we would call the quasi-ballistic regime. We're neither in the diffusive limit nor in the ballistic limit. We're somewhere in between. And that's where modern-day silicon MOSFETs tend to be these days. Okay, so we've discussed the low drain bias linear regime. Let's look at the high drain bias regime. The traditional models, model expresses that current in terms of this high field saturated velocity. That's really not a very physical way to describe what's going on in transport in these devices. We've expressed this in our model in terms of a transmission under saturated conditions. Okay. And the transmission is controlled by the near equilibrium mean free path, you know, the same near equilibrium mean free path that we would deduce from the mobility, and by the length of this critical region, which is controlled by the electrostatic design of the device and always must be there with some length in order to have low dibble and low subthreshold slope. Now I can simply take this expression, plug it into my expression for the current, and manipulate things and remember that products of thermal velocity times mean free path are related to diffusion coefficients and I can um, rearrange terms a little bit and I can end up with an expression that looks fairly simple. It's W width times something with the dimensions of velocity times charge, right? Very sensible, just what it should be. Let's see if we can, you know, and I'll just remind you, D effective, what is D effective? It's just KT over Q times mu effective. It's just the diffusion coefficient that you would deduce from the real effective mobility of electrons. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to interpret this because it looks simple. It should have a simple physical interpretation. So here's our energy band diagram. We're focusing on the top of the barrier where this virtual source is. Our current is width times average velocity times charge at the top of the barrier or the virtual source. And this average velocity there is just one over the ballistic injection velocity plus one over D over L. D has the units of diffusion coefficient, centimeters squared per second, L is length, so D over L has the units of velocity. Physically, what it represents is the average velocity at which electrons are diffusing across this thin bottleneck regime. Now you have to be a little bit careful. What happens as the length of that region gets shorter and shorter and shorter, that velocity gets higher and higher and higher. But Diffusion is random thermal motion. Electrons just bouncing around and scattering but going at the thermal velocity. So there is no physical way that that diffusion velocity can exceed the thermal velocity. Well, what will happen here is that if the length gets very short and the carriers are trying to diffuse across that region faster than the, the thermal velocity permits, we're really in the ballistic regime. And in that case, one over the ballistic velocity will be the limiting velocity and will limit the velocity to that.
So that's the case where there really isn't much diffusion. The electrons are just zipping ballistically across. So we get both the diffusive and the ballistic limit in terms of this simple expression. Now, those of you that are familiar with bipolar transistors, some of this might sound familiar to you. This low field region across which electrons have to diffuse, that looks like the base of a bipolar transistor. And this high field region, which once the electrons get there, just sweeps them out the channel, uh, out the drain contact or the collector contact, that's like a collector in a bipolar transistor. So these devices, the MOSFET and bipolar transistor, internally in terms of their energy bands and the way the electrons are flowing about, they really are very, very similar devices. Okay. All right. So we have this, we've been developing this model, this virtual source model. In the traditional way of doing it, this average velocity is given by an empirical function that, that uh, goes from zero to one and causes the velocity to increase to the high field saturated velocity. That's the traditional model. And the worry there is that in these very short channel devices, Vsat is not a physically sound quantity and mu effective is not a physically valid concept. So we have seen that we can very easily make this virtual source model much more physical. We simply replace the effective mobility by the apparent mobility given by this Matthiessen's rule-like expression. We simply replace the high field saturation velocity by the ballistic injection velocity times transmission over 2 minus transmission, which can be written in this physically suggestive way here. So very simple to relate these two expressions. And not at all surprising that the results end up being so close. Even though we're operating in a much different transport regime, the MOSFET is a barrier control device that is primarily, its IV characteristics are coming from manipulating this potential energy barrier. We'll get different magnitudes of currents depending on what we do for the transport model, but the shape of the IV curves and the mathematical expressions look very similar. Okay, so just to wrap up, we have the linear regime that gives us a good solid description of the low bias current. We have a nice simple expression for the high bias current and these are concepts that until channel lengths get very very small and we have to worry about quantum mechanical transport these concepts should work very well and they have been working very well we'll t just touch in the last week of this course briefly on quantum mechanical transport and understand what that's all about that's really the next frontier in device scaling it is scaling into this regime where this semi-classical picture of electrons as particles that I've been using in this course where it really begins to break down severely and we have to think quantum mechanically but uh, in the semi-classical picture, we've developed a nice, simple, physically intuitive model. Okay, so one more lecture this week. We'll look at some real data and see what we can understand by applying this model to some real data. Thank you.